I'm joined now by Paola Barbarino, CEO of the ADI. Paola, welcome. Many thanks for joining us. The title of this programme is Hope in the Age of Dementia. How important is hope? Hope is hugely important. In the absence of a pharmacological breakthrough of a medicine, uh, hope is really what we have to focus for, for the people who have dementia and for their families. For example, risk reduction is an area where we can have hope. We can improve our diets, we can improve our behavior, do more exercise, get our brain uh, healthy in order to hope not to get disease. And also timely diagnosis. Timely diagnosis is good, it's important for everyone because uh, it's uh, crucial that families understand the person that has the condition, understand what will happen and how best to prepare and how best to live their life um, in the early stages of the disease. There are so many exciting new developments happening at the moment, aren't there? Tell us a bit about those. So Biogen and ASI have uh, developed a uh, molecule and um, uh, this uh, potential medicine called aducanemab is currently undergoing further testing and is being filed for approval in America. This could be a, a huge game changer. Another company in China is developing another drug called oligomanate, which are the equal filing for approval. Both of these compounds need further testing, but it's a really, really promising breakthrough. There's so much, isn't there, going on now throughout the world, and a lot of countries have their own approaches to dementia care. Just give us a flavour, some examples from around the globe. Oh, there are such fantastic examples of care, which is what we really need to focus through in the absence of a therapeutic breakthrough. So, for example, Indonesia have created purple troops. So these are individuals who are trained that if there are people wandering in the street that probably have dementia, they can... Uh, make sure that they are reconnected with their families. They used to have a massive issue with people wandering in the street. In Costa Rica, they have a whole program of dementia-friendly city, which is wonderful. Uh, but one particular thing is the creation of shelters, so to make sure that if people are abandoned in the street, which unfortunately still happens in some part of the world, they do have a roof on, over their head. And another great thing they've done that we don't really have in, in many countries is that they they have created a program of primary health care um, training for doctors and nurses. And this um, is very important. Last year, we did a survey of 70,000 people in which it came out that 62% of healthcare practitioners globally think that dementia is a cause of normal aging. So training our doctors and nurses is absolutely the right thing to do. Throughout this programme, we're going to be talking about global plans for dementia care. How do they differ so much? Why do they differ so much? Not all countries have the resources to implement uh, complete dementia plans. Dementia plans really include a number of areas. And, um, for example, some countries are not particularly good at research. Some countries are, are, are less good about care. Now, ideally, we want everything to be included. But we also understand that you have to start one step at a time. The crucial thing, though, about dementia plans, and the reason why we want dementia plans, is that plans need to be funded because otherwise they're just a piece of paper. So once you have funding, then you can ring fence a budget and then stuff starts to happen. And for us, an advocacy organization, it's a constant way to pick up on a government and say, why aren't you doing this particular activity? That's why they're important. You mentioned funding there. What more needs to be done now in your view? Well, there is a, a huge shortfall on the targets of the World Health Organization. We should have 145 plants by 2025. Currently, there are only 32. And there are 30 in development. But, you know, it could take two years, three years for those in development to come through. So, unfortunately... Uh, there is a huge amount to be done and we all need to pull through. We need to create a movement of people, of citizens that will demand for change because a lot, a lot of governments are in denial. Okay. Paola Barbarino, good luck in your endeavours. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon.